go. We'll first take a look at this. And we'll take a look at this. I mean, just look at this. I mean, can, can you see? Maybe I'll be like standing so. Can you see? Can you see how big they are? They're huge. 800 tons. You see that? That's, that's a person sitting there. Them are the megaliths. This is where they was quarried from. You can see that. And I've guesstimated but by the size of that person there, to the height of that, that's got to be about an 18 foot square, about 18 foot square. So, that's basically, if you live in England, that's right up to the gutter of your house, which is about 18 foot. So, and that's square, so that's as big most most semi-detached houses are 5.5 meters width so you can almost say it's the size of a uh, one part of a semi-detached house and then it's that long come on they haven't got cranes big enough to lift them now so how did they lift them why did they lift them? Um, you know, you've, you've got to be asking these simple questions before we can move on to any kind of understanding of where we are. It, it just makes sense to, to first of all look at this stuff. You look at the pyramids, you look at the amount of time it would take, you look at the length. If they, if they say, oh well they built a ramp they built a ramp uh, to uh, to build them up, and and that was great, wonderful. So they built a ramp, and the amount of blocks that's in there, I I, I think somebody estimated it at uh, one a minute for thirty years, but not just one a minute. And that's okay. One a minute into place, accurately put there. Never mind the intricate workings inside and aligning it to to Sirius star system. You've got to just get them in and, and and put them down, move them. You know that, that's one a minute. Okay, a bricklayer might be able to to, to lay ten bricks a minute if he's on a good 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 stroke. Um, but it has to be bloody quick. So, and that's just a brick, one brick. So imagine lifting like 20 ton blocks, one a minute, up a ramp. So the actual workings behind that to do that sort of thing is, is would just be a nightmare. You can't get flaming trucks to turn up on time now when you're waiting for something. Never mind the weather, never mind everything else. So you see, uh, so, so the, one a minute for 30 years, non-stop, 24 hours a day, we'll build them. Oh dear. Yeah. So then you go to school, teach all these wonderful things. When are they going to start to actually look at this sort of material and, and tell us what's really been going on. Are they doing it because they don't know? If they don't know, then be honest and say, look, we haven't got a clue where we've come from, what's gone on. We've heard of religions, they've always been here. We, 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 I don't know, have we been here? Have we been advanced? My, my theory is we've been advanced. catastrophe hits and we have to build up again people could draw pictures of what we used to do 
on caves where you see cave drawings. I could, I could draw the picture, like uh, Von Daniken says. You know, you could draw the pictures of, of the, the spacecraft. If, if, if our system now was to collapse, sure, I could draw a picture. I could draw a picture in radio. Wouldn't mean a lot. I could draw a picture of, 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 of a zigzag showing you a waveform. Um, so, so that's that's how we used to communicate with waveforms, and only the the top the top people could, could communicate through this way. As time's gone on now, they've allowed everybody to communicate with radios. But going back to when I was younger, we had to take a, a radio amateur's exam um, and pass that to be able to use a radio to, to talk to each other and to do experimental work of which now there's not a lot going on and basically amateur radio is just down to aerials and peripherals around the outside um, and there's no there's no way you can buy buy your actual equipment from anymore you know the only equipment you can buy in England now is you've got one or two shops um, but if you want to go and buy components to actually have a go at really getting back into to, to designing stuff and having a go and, and working the electronic side of it, there's Maplins, uh, RS. If you if you if you can go online, there's, there's online stuff. But really, somewhere like Maplins, you can go in there. I haven't been in there for a while, but you used to be able to go in there. Explain what you wanted, and the people there had a clue of what you, you what you what you, you was talking about. Now maybe it's just turned into a a shop which sells electronic gadgets. Nice shop, better than most, but we we've lost we've lost all the shops that we used to have. Um, 